thank you for the for the opportunity. Um, a real honour and and privilege, really, to be amongst uh, the esteemed tonight. Not just uh, of your presenters, your speakers, yourself, chair, but also the recipients um, of this award. So um, I'm I'm absolutely humbled uh, to be a part of. Uh, this amazing uh, lineup this evening. Um, so before I go into um, presenting uh, the award, um, I'd like to really share my experience, if I may, uh, Chair, of um, this year's COVID. And as the president of the Council for Mosque in Bradford, we're one of the first established uh, Council for Mosques, uh, we will be, inshallah, celebrating 40 years next year. Um, and uh, we really have come a long way in that, in that time as a community. Um, but just taking you back to March uh, this year, we will all um, be, be aware when this COVID came on the scene. I myself, um, in the daytime, I work in the NHS, so I was aware of COVID and the work behind the scenes in uh, in January um, and we started to plan uh, for the virus back then but I don't think anybody really fully understood uh, the full extent and the impact this was going to have and I remember uh, mid-March when I came down to to London uh, to visit the green um, uh, the Garden of Peace Cemetery with Brother Omar and um, at that time, we were both making preparations uh, for burials and deaths from COVID. And we can tell you that it was very, very um, um, difficult uh, to listen to some of the scientists at the time and the impact this virus was likely to have on our communities in particular. And straight after that, we then became aware that the lockdown was definitely going to affect our place of worship and in particular our masjids and let me tell you when you sit down with 120 masajids uh, imams um, and and our community elders it's not an easy conversation to have with your community um, when you are talking about suspending um, uh, congregational prayers uh, and also put in uh, closure on our mosques and madrasas. In my lifetime it's probably one of the most difficult conversations I've ever needed to have um, was on that day of 18th of uh, March um, in, in Bradford at one of our community centres and I remember one of our muftis um, um, sitting with us, uh, with our GPs, um, as well as uh, Dr. Saab from Bima, uh, who you will all know, um, talking about what is the uh, Muslim view on COVID and the closing of masjids. And it was then that I realized the significance and importance of a network of masjids, imams, and and, and the medical fraternity from within the Muslim community. And within a matter of days, I would say within 72 hours, there was a network of council for mosques established up and down the country uh, with imams and scholars and medics coming together and advising people like myself and others on what was gonna be the impact on masjids and how best we handled the situation, which was very, very fluid at the time. What was also going on, that the government were making decisions really with real, without much time to consult with the communities. And very quickly, the, uh, the British Institute um, was set up with, uh, with, with Dr. Asim over there as well. And I want to really use this opportunity, Chair, if I may, to pay respect to the institutions like the MCB and Minab and Bima, who have from day one really come together in making sure that the Muslim community were represented at the cabinet 
and through MHCLG and through <coughs> sciences to make sure the right decision was made and also making sure that the voice of Muslim community was heard. So this year for me, I think we have really um, raised the bar when it comes to representation up and down the country. And I firsthand have witnessed the great work that's gone on behind the scene by all the large institutions, Alhamdulillah, this year that have represented the Muslim community. And it's for that reason that we are able to serve our masjids and make our masjids what they are today. The next uh, kind of piece of um, tribute I'd like to pay in particular is to Faith Associates. In June, we in Bradford have over 120 mosques and madrasas. And Dr. Saab, when I was asked by the public health team in Bradford to sit down with them and to go through their COVID safe policy for mosques and madrasas, let me tell you, it was a very, very daunting task to say, how are we going to make sure our mosques are COVID safe and are going to be ready for the opening on 3rd of July? And it was very difficult because the public health team were very, very busy and they were not able to offer us that third hand experience and service and said to the likes of the Council for Mosques that it's over to you guys and to your masjids to make sure that like businesses you are COVID ready. And you know and I know that not every masjid in the UK is a beacon mosque. That is what we aspire to be and inshallah with the work that's going on one day every masjid in the UK a madrasa will be a beacon mosque or madrasa. But until then we have a journey to travel. And that journey for me was only possible with Brother Shokat Varaj. And I actually put a call into him and I said, look, Shokat Bhai, I've got over 120 mosques that I need to prepare for opening. And I'm not sure whether we as masjids have got the facility and the manpower and the expertise and the knowledge to do that. And the last thing we want is for the pandemic to spread in our masjids and our community to suffer even more so than what they've already suffered. And let me tell you, Shokat Bhai, within three days, put a team of first class people on the ground in Bradford. And we, in the time that it was on the ground for the month, we went through 60 masjids that were risk assessed, that were provided training and PPE in readiness for the opening on 7th, uh, sorry, on 3rd of July. And above that, there was 50 masjid madrasas as well that we had to make sure were ready for the opening as well. So really from myself and the trustees of masjids um, up and down the country, but in particular Bradford, to understand the legal implications of the legislation that was being put through parliament was also very, very difficult. Um, and I think it's only with organizations like the ones I've mentioned and particular faith associates that our institutions will become the catalyst for social change. And I think if we're all looking at 2021 and what does that bring, I think that brings, inshallah, a massive opportunity for the Muslim community to use our masjids as actually the catalyst for social change, to do more than just the five daily prayers and the madrasas. So on that uh, Chair, I will uh, finish my, my vote of thanks to yourself and, and, and also to uh, the Beacon Mosque for this wonderful um, scheme that they've been running for, third, for the third year now. And uh, inshallah, um, I, I wish him uh, continued uh, success. Um, may I now hand over um, to yourself and the technical team who have done a fantastic job to announce the shortlist.
and uh, to say that it's my pleasure to announce the British Beacon Moscow War 2020 for the best outreach service, and that is Masjid Al Falah in Birmingham. Alhamdulillah, um, it is only with the blessing of Allah. Uh, the du'as and the efforts of all the volunteers, our, our donors who have contributed towards uh, the recognition uh, of our humble, humble efforts. Uh, for us to be counted in the company of um, such esteemed organizations means a lot to our community, our organization, uh, and these are the mosques that we've actually looked up to with, with great awe and respect over the years. Uh, as you know, Dr. Chandi, you have, you've been to us in the initial stages of our masjid. We are a, a community-based uh, masjid in Birmingham, and our aim has always been to be the heart of solutions for our community. And as Dr. Fahim said a while ago, that it is a community that stepped up during this pandemic and has provided testament for the great strength and unity that we have within ourselves, really. So I'm, I'm accept, accepting this award on behalf of an absolutely amazing and passionate team of hard grafting volunteers that have worked tirelessly, really tirelessly, to deliver all our initiatives that have touched the heart uh, of our community. And... Um, Prithandia and um, Sikarim, passion is a word that is synonymous with the efforts that we as a team carry out. It's really difficult. I can't single out uh, any individual. But after Allah, I would like to thank all our volunteers, supporters, donors, partners that we have worked with, and internally along with our ulema, the management team, the trustees, and really every single member of our association who has stood with us uh, during this testing time. So truly, um, Allah and his messenger, um, peace be upon him, has given us guidance to, to help, to give, to support others. Uh, and we as a team have tried to do this over the last five years. And it has culminated today in this kind of recognition. And may Allah uh, accept our efforts and the efforts made by all the other organizations throughout the country. Uh, I just wanted to say a big jazakallah khair to yourself, Dr. Chantia, a brother Shokat, who has actually given us a, a roadmap to aspire to us. And with those little words, I just wanted to say uh, jazakallah khair again, and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.